Uh, welcome, Hassan Man, to Ivanhoe. Weather's forced us inside. It's freezing cold out there, a bit wet. But uh, we're supposed to meet at the Ivanhoe Golf Club today. But good to have you here. Well, it wasn't too bad. We we played our 18 holes, and uh, conditions were quite muddy. A bit reminiscent of the footy days uh, in in the mud, but uh, they weren't too bad. So it's been a fantastic life in footy. Uh, where did it all start? Well, it all started, I guess, uh, as a country boy uh, up in the little township of Mervine, up in the Sunraysia area, just out of Mildura. Um, I was playing my first senior game with Mervine as a 16-year-old. And Jim Cargill, the uh, Prince of Secretaries, as we knew him, was up there recruiting or looking at another player who was also playing with Mervine. And uh, as it turned out, six o'clock that evening after the first game that I played, Jim was at uh, my place uh, knocking on the door, endeavouring to sign me up on a Form 4. Melbourne was right in the middle of its, of its run, of its golden era. Must have been a wonderful time to be around. Melbourne probably started their run in 55, or probably 54. I think they made the finals 54. They won at 55, 56, 57, um, beaten by Collingwood in 58. And I came on the scene in 59 and was lucky enough to play in the Premiership in my first year, ironically against Essendon, and uh, then we won 59, we won again in 60, and again in 64. So I was very fortunate to come in that mid-period, I guess, and uh, uh, played in the, what they terminate, I guess, as the golden era of the Melbourne Footy Club. So Hassery, in these interviews with, with past players, quite a few of them we've, we've wound up talking about leadership and mentors and, and of course it's gone back to coaches. You had Norm Smith. Tell us a bit about Norm. I've always said that whatever success I had at Melbourne, I owe it to Norm. I think, I mean, Norm, his record as a coach, I mean, is uh, basically unparalleled in that he was acknowledged as the coach of the century, the AFL coach of the century, and uh, his record of you know, six premierships in ten years uh, sort of stands by itself. He, he, uh, I think all of the players who played in that era would be, would say that similar to me that uh, uh, their success was probably due to not only him as a coach, but I guess his life qualities uh, also made us, you know, uh, we appreciate it. What were the qualities? What, what was he encouraging you to be as, as a person, as a footballer? He was very strong on discipline, and I think that was probably one of the qualities that uh, we all had. He um, uh, demanded a lot, um, and uh, probably got what he demanded. Um, I think I could probably say that I would, as a player, I would be prepared to run through a brick wall for Norm, knock yourself out, come to, and do it again. And I think that all the players. Uh, in that era could basically say the same. Yeah, so midway through your career, you're, you're mid-twenties, Barassi, you've, you've just won the flag, Barassi up and goes to, to Carlton. How, how did you handle that? Which shocked all of us. Um, Norm certainly didn't want him to go, and Norm offered, offered to stand aside as coach of Melbourne so Ron could stay at Melbourne. Um, and I guess Ron weighed it up and thought that um, you know, he, if he wanted to make a name for himself, he would accept the, the Carlton coaching side. Uh, it shocked all of us as players. I guess I was vice captain in uh, in '64 for the for the uh, for grand final, um, but uh, it was hard to comprehend that a guy with the record that Brass had, you know, played in what six grand finals, um, was was as good as a player as you would see. To, and a very dedicated, loyal Melbourne player to pull up stakes and go to Carlton was hard to understand. Who'd have thought, Hassa, politics in a footy club? There was clearly something going on at Melbourne that time, given the events that, that followed. We got away to a very good start in 65. I mean, we, we had something like, we'd won eight of the first ten games. But... Who was to know that the biggest bombshell in, in probably AFL or VFL history, Norm Smith got sacked. And uh, um, that, 
that was even a bigger shock than Brass going to Carlton. What do you know about how that Norm Smith situation unfolded? That Friday night, he's told me what my role was and what, how we were going to play against North Melbourne at Coburg. And uh, the doorbell rang. And I heard the, the ding on the phone. And Norm said, well, basically, he said, you know, we've spoken about the game, I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Um, fine. We, uh, I went, I remember, recalled recall very vividly. I've gone to the fridge for a glass of milk and the phone rings. And uh, it's Norm crying. Um, and I thought it was a crank. And I made a profound statement to get off the phone, you idiot. Uh, but he convinced me it was, um, and he'd received a telegram saying that he had just been sacked as coach of the Melbourne Footy Club. I mean, that was a far greater shock than even Brass going to, um, particularly when you look at his record. You played Saturday. What was the rest of the week? How did it unfold? You'd play on the Saturday. Um, occasionally you'd get together for Sunday. Occasionally. Um, you'd train Tuesday night. What time was training Tuesday uh, night? After work. Yeah. So um, when I first started I was in the bank and I'd walk down from... from um, um, Burke Street down to the, down to the ground, and we start training at say at five five fifteen, um, in very dimly lit conditions, in very muddy conditions in the winter. Uh, that was Tuesday night. Thursday night would be the same. Um, I would probably do something, go running myself over Wednesday night. But basically, it was only two nights a week. Play on the Saturday and um, very rarely get together on a Sunday unless you were injured and you'd probably go and get a bit of treatment from um, one of your physios or something away from the club. Just sitting, talking with you and listening to you, Hassa, that there's no doubt your heart still beats true for the, for the red and the blue. How do you feel about the last 15 years and where the club is? It's disappointing to think that I'm still a member of the last Premiership side. Disappointing to think that it's now, you know, 50 plus years, 51 years since we, we won the Premiership. Um, and I feel sorry for today's players in that, knowing how much time they put in to training and the demands and the sacrifices that they have to make um, without being fortunate enough to experience what we experienced. I mean, to play in the grand final and to win a Premiership You've got to be very, very lucky. Uh, in my case, to play in three, I was extremely lucky. And it has a Monday, the old enemy, what's going to happen? Well, hopefully Melbourne had one of their good days. I mean, uh, they've shown some, some form spasmodically, I guess, over this season. They've shown some good form in some games and some terrible form on others. But hopefully they uh, perform well. I mean, you go back to my era, Traditional games were, were Queen's Birthday, traditional games were Melbourne Collingwood, traditional enemies were, were Collingwood, and I think that but the team we admired probably most of all was Collingwood because of their competitiveness and their probably hate for Melbourne. <laughs>